Hello, hello! Welcome to the HVAC Diaries. Today is Saturday, June 10th, and you guys know what time it is. It's time for an HVAC vlog! <laughs> Do you guys miss me? I had the best time with my husband in the most beautiful resort in Montego Bay in Jamaica. We almost didn't come home. But I'm glad we did because I came back to the most exciting, awesomest work week ever. And maybe I'm just saying that because I'm just happy to be back at work. Yes. And I did have an exciting week. And I've got so much to tell you about. So I don't even know where to start. I hope this vlog doesn't take too long because I got a lot to get through. I think we had the perfect mix of the types of work we did this week. We replaced two compressors. We did a little bit of um, HVAC work. We did some refrigeration work. I even had a solo day changing filters and doing maintenances. I cleaned an ice machine and we had some industrial work as well. So where to start? I think, I think I'll start with my favorite job this week, which was actually yesterday. We got called to our meat supplier. I keep calling it the gift that keeps giving. I, I don't love working there because it's pretty gross, but I do love working there because it's such a great learning experience. Every job that we do there, it's a learning experience for me and I, I love it. I get to apply everything that I learned at school at this place. Anyway, so in their store, they've got a nine door, I think it's a nine door cooler, and then they've got an 11 door freezer. So it's a display reaching freezer. So they called us and they were like, the freezer's not working. So we, we go, um, we found the breaker tripped. So as we put the breaker on, it's, it trips immediately. So we checked the rooftop unit and we found the compressor is grounded. So luckily we found a local compressor. Some, our supplier had it locally. Uh, so we didn't have to ship it in or anything like that. So we were back the next day to replace it. And the reason it was my favorite job this week is because my dad is notorious for trying to help and usually that means doing the entire job himself. But this one, he actually let me do most of it myself so I feel like, I feel so accomplished after I feel like I replaced that compressor yesterday all by myself under very, very close supervision. <laughs> However, I will say that it was a team effort just like every job we do at Cam Cool all hands on deck and we get the job done nice and quickly and properly.
The second compressor we replaced this week, earlier this week, was at a grains facility manufacturer. It's a really massive facility in North Vancouver. Um, and it's right beside the sea. It's actually really cool. We got to see them filling shipping containers with the grains and like these little arm, not little, these massive arms come down um, and they like telescope into the ship's belly and they disperse the grains. Anyway, very cool. And there's so many, there's so much like sea wildlife around there, the seagulls and so many geese. And right now there's so many goslings. They're the cutest things. Oh my goodness, they're so fuzzy and cute. And there's usually always a mom at the front and then the babies and then the dad at the back, or maybe it's the dad in the front, I don't know. But it's so sweet, I love it. Last time I worked, actually not last time, but the very first time I ever worked at this location, I was so excited because there's not only all the geese and the goslings around, but I saw a starfish on the ground right there. I guess a, a seagull dropped him or something, but I came here and I found this massive fleshy starfish on the ground. And I, uh, I was, <laughs> I don't want to touch it, so I flicked it with a stick back into the ocean. But that was one of the most exciting stories I ever had as an HVAC um, apprentice. And that was like my first few days on the job. <laughs> Working there is very serious. Like we had to have a hot work permit. Uh, with fire watch so what that means is somebody comes somebody from that facility comes and watches us do our fire torch work and then for about two hours it depends on what the um, the supervisor deems necessary but they could either be standing there for an hour two hours four hours six hours even just to watch the area to make sure that no random sparks got got lost causing a fire so their job is to literally stand there and just watch so that there's no fire. Some of the refrigeration jobs we did this week, um, like I mentioned, I cleaned a little ice machine. It's this really tiny, actually like an old school style of ice machine. Actually, I'll show you. So the way this ice machine works is different to all of the commercial ones that I work on. This is just in a little bar, under counter ice machine. So what happens here is the water tricks the water trickles over this evaporator plate right here and it forms a solid slab of ice. And once that's formed, the ice, the whole slab moves onto this grid. And these grid lines actually cut the cubes and then they fall into the trough. And that's actually in the condo of the owner of all the liquor stores that I service around the lower mainland. We also had a really interesting situation this week with an evaporator. Um, so the fan stopped working, so my dad replaced it with, it's a Russell evaporator. And it's just a single fan, it's got a 12 inch blade on it, it's quite large. So my dad replaced the motor while I was away. And that motor stopped working within 24 hours, so he replaced it again stopped working within 24 hours again. Actually, not even 24 hours. It was more like six or seven hours. 
So we went back a third time, or was it a fourth time? I've kind of lost count now. No, it was a fourth time because we were, we returned three of the motors. So there's these little ECM motors. I'll sh show you. And yeah, so we would install it. It would run. It would run fully, like, properly under amperage. It wasn't over-amping or anything like that. And it would just stop running. And as soon as you uh, cut power to it and re-energized it, it would start running again. No problem. Six, seven hours later, it's like, no, nah, I'm not working anymore. So, so interesting. So we ended up replacing it with a PSC motor instead of trying a fourth ECM motor. My dad just reconfigured it a little bit. And my brother actually checked out some forms online and found that some other technician had a similar problem with these exact same Russell evaporator motors that he went through eight or nine of them before he found one that actually continued to work and what he what they found out of that was it was just a bad batch of motors from the factory so we're wondering like did we get the exact same bad batch we're not sure it's a, a bit of a mystery but the PSC motor has not quit and we replaced that on Wednesday. So I also got to work at a taco place. They have a prep cooler that stopped working and they just needed a new temperature controller. It just wasn't sending any power to the unit. So I had to order one of those pots. It was an OEM pot for true refrigeration. Oh my goodness. It took almost a month for that thing to arrive. Like because I had to program it specially. And anyway, we finally got it in our hands and I got to replace it um, early one morning. And I just love it. They give me the keys to the place. So I'm like, let's go have a taco party. I'm just kidding. I got the keys to the place. <laughs> Anyone want a taco party? I'm just kidding. <laughs> We also did a little bit of refrigeration maintenance at a restaurant. We just cleaned out all of their condenser coils because they get really fuzzy during the year. So, And our last refrigeration job, I got to replace a contactor on a walk-in freezer. Check how badly it was rusted and burnt. And of course, a bunch of HVAC maintenances. I changed filters and just brushed off condenser coils and cleaned P-traps and checked a sequence of operation and all of that stuff. Got a truck full of filters for a day of maintenances.
all three of these units looked like they were dive bombed by seagulls. That one has got stuff dripping down the side of it. Oh, what the hell? What the hell? <laughs> Then we did um, a major maintenance service on another air dryer at a sawmill. We've been working at the sawmill quite a bit actually. A few weeks before, or the week before I left for Jamaica, we were installing an air conditioner in the foreman's office. But this time we were doing a major, like just an annual maintenance where we replaced the filter dryer on the air dryer, um, checked the dew point, adjusted it if we needed to. And then we got to watch these logs. Oh my goodness. They've got these massive machines outside with, they're right on the river and the logs come floating up and there's like a little tugboat that pushes them around. It's so cool. Um, the log goes up into this machine. All of the bark gets pulled off of it. I think it's called a debarker. That's what I called it. It debarks the logs and then the log comes spinning out of it and psh, lands in the river and then floats down onto the next process at that plant so super cool and i got a video for you oh my goodness where the logs come down what was i doing oh my gosh they're massive in personal news before i go my parents celebrated their 44th wedding anniversary this this week 44 years that is so cool all right guys that's all for you this week i'm gonna leave it there i hope you enjoyed this episode of the hvac diaries hvac vlog i enjoyed my week so much i enjoyed talking about it and i'm just looking forward to another super awesome week next week so thanks for tuning in i hope you have an excellent week See ya! <laughs>